All right, what's up tycoons? What's up traders? Super excited for today's video. Lots to talk about, all right? We're gonna talk about so much in this video and really earnings is a big key, all right? We're gonna break down earnings, but there's some interesting stuff out there that you guys don't know about. I really wanna bring to your attention. So be sure to watch the video all the way through so you don't miss any of the key data in today's video and be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Now, when you look at what do you think is currently the most crowded trade, surprisingly it is still cash okay a large majority of people are still in cash all right and they're overweight cash emerging markets healthcare uh and they're underweight equities the uk and utilities so you know basically underweight e equities that simply means stocks right and so when you take a look right at here you can see this is where they're largely underweight and this is a bank of america global fund manager survey um, and you can see equities right here. Now they do have uh, exposure right here to technology, but even with the massive rally in tech, you'd think that this would be an area where they're more overweight at and where you see, um, you know, really an abundance of, of the money going to, but rather that is not the case. Um, and so there's two ways to look at this, right? Are they, or do they know something we don't? And is there a big crash coming or could this be even more fuel to the fire, right? That's something that you have to consider with a large amount of, you know, the biggest overweighting is in cash. So where is this cash going to go to, right? Is it going to go to bonds? Well, we see that they, you know, don't really have big exposure to bonds right now. All right. But if it goes into technology, all right, and basically that's, you know, going to be the top stocks uh, in the S&P 500, um, then those stocks could continue to even, you know, continue rising even more, uh, which is, you know, something that you have to kind of keep in mind is that uh, there is possibility that, you know, positioning is a really big part of why the market has been rallying so much. So many people were underweight tech and underweight stocks uh, due to being able to get really good rates and, you know, short-term treasury rates we're yielding you, you know, 5%. Uh, and so what, one theory that I have is as those treasury rates start to come to maturity, right? Uh, we've already passed the first six months. So a lot of six month T-bills, if you got into those in January, uh, those are reaching maturity. And, you know, then there's three month T-bills. And I think that my opinion, just a guess, okay, is that we could start to see some of this money that's been in treasuries start to come into the stock market because, you know, they've been missing out on the rally, right? They're like, oh, well, I'm getting 5% risk free. And meanwhile, they missed a 45% rally in the NASDAQ. And maybe they want to start chasing that. We know that, you know, psychology is a big part of investing. And a lot of times people FOMO into things. Now, what's one reason why they could be so underweight, right? And why, in, uh, you know, this fund manager survey, why they say they're so overweight in cash. Um, this is one thing to consider right here. And this could probably be a reason. Uh, the June CPI print is likely the last for favorable year over year in effect. Uh, we peaked in inflation in June. And since then, we've had a strong decline and so when you're looking at the year over year basis, right, the comps are going to deteriorate. Okay, we're no longer going and in, in comparing against record inflation, we're going to be comparing against lower levels of inflation on a year over year basis. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. Another reason why maybe, um, you know, fund managers are so overweight cash is that margin expectations have fallen and record margins are no longer penciled in by analysts. This is the S&P 500 quarterly net margins X financials. Uh, and you can kind of see what we're talking about right here on the chart. If we move forward, uh, we've got a huge, huge earnings week this week. Um, you know, some of the the ones that I'm really excited about, they're going to be SoFi. All right. Also really excited about AMD. The cruise lines have been absolutely crushing it. Uber's also going to be a really nice one. Um, you know, I don't normally play things like Pfizer or Moderna, but Pfizer is going to be in there. Pinterest is really nice. Micro strategy. All right. Then we have, uh, you know, Shopify is another one. Qualcomm, Oxy, this is Warren Buffett's new baby, All right? Then we've got big dogs in here, guys. We've got Amazon, we've got Apple. Um, and then, you know, we have a nice uh, retail stock right here, Fubo. I'm sure that'll get a lot of attention on things like YouTube. Um, you know, so huge, huge week coming in earnings. And that's why we're going to talk a little bit about earnings and focus on that in today's video. We're also going to go over some trade ideas. This is RTX. Um, and, you know, this is a potential trade idea right here. A huge, huge gap up, kind of self-explanatory right here. Um, then we're going to take a look at the TNX, which is the 10-year treasury. And we'll also take a look at TLT, kind of break those down. So, 
you know, be sure to stay to the end. All right. Um, you know, that's when we'll go over the technicals and break down these charts. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Today's video is sponsored by Simply Wall Street. It's a really great platform where you guys can get fundamental analysis, great research, and much, much more. You can even do scans on there. Uh, you can build model portfolios and you guys can get a 14 day free trial using the link in the description below. I've got nothing to you to lose using that uh, using that link with the 14 day free trial. And I promise you guys won't be disappointed. And you may even want to purchase um, their annual plan. And if you do so, the first 100 people using my link will get up to 40% off. Uh, so that puts it at less than $200 for an entire annual plan. Now, you can always reach out to me too anytime, exactlytrades at gmail.com for a one-on-one -on -one personal coaching session. If you guys are interested, we can schedule a time together. I do those every single week. And as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So please be sure to read through the full disclaimer. Now, the gulf of sentiment. Stock investors are confident while consumers are not, opening a huge gap up in sentiment between the two groups. And this is the difference between the percentage change of the S&P 500 and University of Michigan sentiment surveys monthly. And it, it's at 30 percentage points right now. Um, that's huge, right? So we talked and we looked at the beginning at those fund manager surveys and they're all overweight cash. Meanwhile, retail and individual investors are are very, um, you know, bullish in the market right now. And, you know, they stayed through that bear market and, you know, continued to hold and even buy during that bear market. Um, if we take a look here, global institutions are bearish, but U.S. individuals are bullish. We're seeing a huge, huge difference um, in the two of those, right? This is the AAII uh, total stock allocation. And then we have the net percentage of uh, Bank of America fund manager survey overweight global equities. And you can see here that there's a huge difference in the two of these. And, you know, fund managers are not as bullish as individual investors right here. Uh, so, you know, really just showing you guys the big difference. And we kind of talked about, you know, some of the reasons why maybe, um, you know, some of these fund managers aren't necessarily as bullish as the retail investor. And another way to just really show this, um, when they ask people and they say, are you more likely to increase or decrease equity exposure over the coming days and weeks? Uh, it's currently at 17% planning to increase equity exposure. So that's really, really low. Um, and this is another fund manager survey. And right here, it's kind of just showing you guys that, all right, things are very frothy at the moment. Um, and, you know, a lot of hedge funds, institutions, fund managers, you know, they're not looking to increase their equity exposure, uh, especially around earnings right now. These are the expectations of higher stock prices. And this is the mean probability that U.S. stock prices will be higher one year from now. And the mean probability is actually at 35.3%. So again, we're not seeing bullish, you know, sentiment out there except from those retail and, you know, individual investors. You know, only 35% of people think that the stocks, uh, stock prices will be higher one year from now. Um, you know, again, from another survey, this is the New York Fed survey of consumer expectations. All right. Now, what's really interesting, if you take a look at non-recessionary bear markets and then recessionary bear markets, there's a big difference. And the bear markets that include a recession are much larger than the bear markets uh, that have a non-recession that basically don't have a recession now. It depends on who you ask. All right. In 2022, there was two consecutive uh, negative you know, GDP prints. Uh, that's technically the definition of a recession. But a lot of people say it wasn't a recession because the labor market was too strong. So we're not here to argue over that. We're just going to go over, you know, what they're putting the facts at now. And if you look, the average decline is about 25 percent. Uh, and oddly enough, that's exactly what the market did. The market dropped 25 percent before ending that bear market and entering this new bull market that uh, we've officially entered by technical definition. Now, earnings typically recover stronger than they fall. So we saw a lot of earnings, you know, revisions down. And, you know, we, we all saw what happened in 2022. But when you take a look at the trailing 12 month earnings per share before and after earnings troughs, this is the same number of quarters leading to the trough and following the trough. 100 equals the pre-recession peak from 1950 to the present. And we can see here that the earnings typically recover much stronger than they fall. OK, so, you know, we see that we have the fall right here in all of these and then they recover very, very strongly at these points afterwards. 
so that's definitely something to consider, you know, as well. And that's why we're seeing a large amount of beats. Um, I think about 68% of stocks in the S&P 500 uh, at the time of this recording have actually beat earnings expectations. Um, largely due to them being lowered so much, you know, last year and for the outlook on this year. Um, but that's definitely something you have to consider going forward. Now, what's very interesting about that, though, is that earning beats are actually underperforming earnings misses. This has never happened before since 2000. And, you know, this right here shows it to you. So uh, the blue line is going to be when you get a beat on both. And then the yellow line is when you get a miss on both. All right. Now, what's crazy about this is that the companies that are missing, right, are actually outperforming the companies that beat. Uh, and that's so strange, guys. But if you think about it, what's really happening is that the companies that are missing, right, I think that they're rallying so much and they're actually, you know, performing so well because they didn't miss as bad as it was expected, right? We talked about how, you know, the expectations were set really low for a lot of companies, and even though they're missing their earnings uh, guidance and, and, and things like that, uh, they're actually coming out and the market is reacting well to them because it's saying, oh, hey, well, it actually wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. Maybe this is a good company to invest in, right? If you look at the one month guidance ratio, this is the number of above versus below consensus guidance. It's tracking at 1.6. This is the strongest level since October of 2021. Right. Um, so that's also very interesting to see. So we're seeing a lot of companies giving really strong one month guidance right now. Um, and that's going to be, you know, a little bit more of a bullish indicator. Uh, when you take a look at uh, S&P 500 quarterly bottom up EPS actuals versus the estimates, um, you know, the, the, the earnings recession is backwards looking. Right. So when you get those earnings recessions. Um, you know, it, it, I mean that it's backward looking in the sense that, you know, that stuff is already happening. And in the future is when you're going to get, you know, those EPS boosts, right? And that's when you're going to start to see. And so you can see here when we had that earnings recession and the future is actually looking good for a lot of company earnings. Um, 2025, I think is going to be a really nice time in the market. Uh, we'll just have to see. Um, but if you take a look here, you know, all of the estimates right here are looking pretty, pretty good. All right. Going into the future, Q3, Q4. Uh, and then, you know, we have Q1 of 2024 and so on and so forth. Um, now, a lot of people say that this market was really being carried by 10 stocks. Um, but the Dow Jones, it actually made history um, and, you know, went on a historic 13 day consecutive run. I don't think it made it to 14. I think it fell on the 14th day, but I know it at least went 13. And these are, you know, just a, a good, basically jumble of stocks that have been rallying in the Dow Jones, right? You have UNH, United Health, you have IBM, Goldman Sachs, Chevron. You know, these aren't companies, these aren't stocks that people are just YOLOing into, right? When they say like, you know, that it, it's all just, you know, basically NVIDIA, it's all just Apple, it's all just meta, things like that. You know, a lot of times you hear about retail traders, you know, yellowing into those buying call options and different things like that. These aren't companies like that, right? We're looking at Johnson & Johnson, we're looking at Honeywell, Verizon, Cisco, Home Depot, um, you know, and these are a lot of stocks that have really been boosting the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, when you look at the value factor excess returns of U.S. large stocks, uh, you can see that it's really been a, there's been a lot of positive excess return in the U.S. large stocks. And this is from the beginning of the year, basically to, you know, the, the, the first half of the year. And you can see here the, the really impressive gains that you've gotten um, by being in those large cap stocks and being in, you know, the big names in the market. This is the Schiller P.E. ratio over time. And. One thing that I basically like to, you know, remind people about is that valuations change. OK, so, you know, you can see that overall it's an uptrend. So people, you know, talk about being a value investor and looking at P.E. ratios and things like that. Um, you know, things definitely get frothy at times, right? They get frothy here. They get frothy here. They get frothy here. Uh, and then they come back down very rapidly. OK, and you get that, uh, you know, compression. But overall, you know, they're going to be in an uptrend. So, you know, what historically was a good value, if you take a look back in here at this time period, and let's just say your mean is somewhere in here at this range, uh, that's a much different mean and a much different average than something like this, where it might be right here, all right, in the, you know, high 20s. 
So that's something you have to consider is that it's really tough to, you know, be, uh, you know, an investor, especially when choosing individual stocks. So, you know, keep in mind that over time, you know, PE ratios are going to continue to go higher and they're going to continue to grow. And there's going to be a new average, um, you know, and, you know, you can't really go by, you know, the old historical data from 50 years ago of what was a good PE ratio, you know, that's going to change. That's going to be a much different environment. You know, if we were to simply just draw a horizontal line here from the peak, you would see that there was only a very short amount of time, you know, that really <clears throat> basically, you know, if this is frothy to you over here and over here, and you're looking for PE ratios that are essentially, you know, somewhere in this range right here, you can see that there really was only about one time uh, where as a value investor, right, you would have said, okay, now stocks are a good value. And this is often when people are selling and saying that things are going to continue to keep going lower and lower and lower. So keep that in mind whenever you look at these PE ratios and different things like that. Um, oftentimes, you know, using some of the fundamentals and using PE ratios, uh, they can they can they can keep you bearish, right? Uh, fundamentals, uh, fundamental analysis can keep you bearish longer than you know you, you you'll basically miss the whole run, right? Um, you know, you look at something like Apple, right? And people talk about Warren Buffett and and you know being a value investor. Um, his best trade is Apple, and he's still holding the thing. And it's got a pretty, you know, elevated PE ratio uh, and different things like that. So, you know, um, just come up with your own opinions and don't always just go by people, uh, you know, by a tweet saying that, oh, you know, the PE ratio is too high. You know, you have to actually do a little bit more research than just that. Now, you look at the valuations by market cap range and weights. Uh, we can see here that the top 10 stocks basically are all uh, at a forward PE ratio of over 30, uh, basically 30.6. And then you see that the rest of the market is not as frothy. So, um, you know, the PE ratios for the S&P 500 uh, total, right, are, are being drug up higher by the top 10 stocks. When you look at the rest of them, they basically have an average of 17, right, from 18 all the way down to 14.1, with a vast majority of them being right around that 17 price level, um, you know, forward PE ratio level. So, you know, that's definitely something also you want to consider, right, is, is when you're looking at PE ratios for the index, all right, are you clumping in some other stocks in there and saying other stocks are overvalued when maybe they're not, you know, valued as high and maybe it's just a few stocks that are really heavily weighted, um, you know, carrying in elevating the PE ratios in the market right now. Um, now this is RTX, okay, this is Raytheon. Uh, if we take a look here, there's a huge massive gap, all right, from earnings. And a lot of times you get these earnings over reactions and, you know, basically the trade here is going to be the gap fill, right? We're very close to filling this gap. The gap is essentially acting as an ascending triangle right now, which this is not a, you know, rising wedge or anything like that. An ascending triangle is actually a bullish pattern and you look for a breakout. And if we were to just draw a quick horizontal line right here, you can see that we essentially did kind of break out through that range here. And we're looking to see, is this going to be a breakout retest and push higher? And are we going to fill this gap up from $88 all the way up to 97 um, lots of potential here with this one. And, you know, maybe we recover. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you fill half of a gap. So if you come and let's say we come up roughly around to this 92 area and we find resistance, we find strong resistance and start to roll over. Um, that's going to be a bearish signal, right? A half gap fill is bearish. Um, and that's, you know, if you see a strong rejection around the halfway point, um, you know, of a gap, then that's going to be a bearish signal. And it could be a sign that, you know, it's not really going to fill the rest of the gap. So keep a close eye on RTX. Just want to give you guys a little trade idea. All right. I don't have a position in it or anything right now at the moment. Just, you know, something to consider. Keep on your radar. This is TNX right here. TNX, we're looking like we got our five wave move to the upside and we'd be expecting an ABC correction to the downside. Now, uh, when we take a look at TLT, it's, there's there's been some really, really red days over there in TLT. And a large portion of it is because the TNX has been moving up, right? Treasury yields are going up. And as yields are going up, we're going to see the price of bonds go down. So it makes a lot of sense. But to me, what I really like about this is that it rejected the 78.6% retracement level, um, you know, pretty much to the T, right? We had the move down retracement up for our B wave and our C wave is looking to potentially target 3.643. Now, 
that would suggest that treasury rates go down and that bond prices, something like TLT, could start to rise. So we're going to see if that will happen. Now, this could be an extended wave three, this wave five right here. So this could be one, two, three, four, five. And that would give us a breakout above this trend line here. So we do nef definitely need to be cautious. If we break out above 4.024, then there's a strong chance we're going to break out above that trend line. And then we're going to get that extended wave three and then wave four five right here and that would put tnx somewhere around 4.2 all the way up to about 4.4 so we'll have to you know adjust our structure as we see it but to me it already seems like we got our you know completed our five wave up and then we got an abc correction down here and now we're looking for our new larger structure which is going to be a one two three like this and then four or five um you know if you watch my bond market analysis videos where i go over all of them things like TNX, TLT, HYG, JNK, um, you know, all of them, then you'll see that I am tracking a larger bullish structure on TNX. Uh, but more short term, we're going to be looking to see if we get this C wave down. And this would be, you know, your ABC for wave two, right? So you would have wave one right here, and then you would have wave two, and then we would start wave three up here. And one and three are supposed to be five wave impulsive moves. Meanwhile, your twos and your fours, those are supposed to be ABC corrections. So, um, you know, for now, things are following the analysis. We'll see exactly what's going to happen, um, you know, very shortly. We should know within the next uh, week or two. Uh, this is TLT on the daily chart. TLT has had some really, really strong support here right around that $99 price level. And you can see that we actually bounced a little bit up 0.51 percent on friday um and you know there's the potential for a double bottom right here even really a triple bottom because we already hit it once here we got a double bounce but we need to be cautious if we break below 99 there's a gap down to 95 i think it's very possible we come down and fill that gap if we break below 99 dollars uh the next big support level is 98.15 then 96.65 then we have the gap fill here at 95 support at 94.73 and then also support at 92.3 now, that's a very far away from here. There's a couple reasons why we could see, you know, such a big move down in TLT. And a lot of it's got to do with more of the global economy. Um, I've got a video coming out soon. Uh, we got to discuss, you know, basically the Bank of Japan and what the BOJ is doing. Um, they're doing some things that could be causing, you know, uh, money to be going away from our treasuries. Uh, and that would result in yields going higher and bond prices going lower. Uh, so we'll have to keep a close eye on that. Be sure to stay tuned for that video. Um, you know, I'll have it coming out sometime early this week. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, 102.88 is that big resistance level that's been, you know, kicking TLT's butt. It really got some hands and just laying the smack down every time TLT has tried to get above there. It hasn't been able to flip it to support from resistance. Um, and we're still battling there. Keep a very close eye on 99. If we break 99, then I think that there is great, you know, really good chances that we end up coming down and filling that gap here around $95. So, um, that's going to be it for today's video. Smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Uh, don't forget, you can always email me too for those one-on-one -on -one co personal coaching sessions. If you guys are ever interested, we can work on scheduling a time together.